It's Thursday, December 31st, 2020, a year that will live in infamy. I, like most of my compatriots, have been cooped up in a house for the last nine, nine months of this pandemic. And before I get on to my usual rant, I want to wish everybody out there a happy new year and a healthy new year. And I'm looking forward to a 2021 that beats the shit out of 2020. That shouldn't be too hard if we get the vaccines out in time and we get everything under control in a reasonable amount of time. A reasonable amount of time in my mind is by June 30th, the way it's going right now. Biden's going to have his hands full and hopefully... He'll get cooperation at some point and be able to get get us on the way to achieving the end of this mess that we're in. But I want to talk about an article that I read in the Washington Post. This article categorically claims that the trickle-down tax cuts make the rich richer, but are of no value at all to the overall economy. That's what the studies that were done by as many group of prominent economists. So you know the story that we were told when we issued the 2017 tax cuts in this country. Those tax cuts were supposed to be rocket fuel for the economy. The arguments were that freeing up money for the wealthy would allow them to hire more workers, pay better wages, and invest more. In other words... The money would trickle down from the rich to everyone else. I defy anybody out there to show me that this actually happened. And many economists predicted slashing individual corporate and estate taxes was mostly a windfall for the big corporations and wealthy Americans. And we saw what they did with it. They didn't hire more people. They bought back their stock and drove the stock prices up. The Tax Cut and Jobs Act, as it was called, did not pay for itself. It failed to stimulate long-term growth, and it did not lead to sustained business investments. Now, we could take a look at 2020 and say, no matter what that tax cut did, the pandemic did more damage. But we were not on the way to a rising, booming economy before the pandemic hit. And if you take a quick look at the taxes on the rich, right? Top tax rate, the estate tax, and the tax on capital gains. They don't help the little guy because most of the little guys don't have that money. They don't pay those taxes. So I'm going to give a tax cut to people that have these taxes and claim it helps the poorer people. When it doesn't. When it doesn't help the poorer people. So when these economists looked at a five-year period after tax cuts, the the tax cuts succeeded in putting more money into the pockets of the rich. The share of national income flowing to the top 1% was worth more than all the money that flowed to the bottom 10% of the people. So the study showed that these tax cuts had no effect on economic growth or employment. In fact, these rocket-fueled tax cuts fizzled out time and time again. In fact, the study showed that tax cuts for the rich lead to higher and higher income inequality. And this fact is true in every wealthy nation. This is not something that is unique to the United States. Tax cuts lead to inequality in income around the world. So if these facts are given and are known to the major policymakers in the world, and especially Republicans in the United States, why? Why do they continue to fight for tax cuts? Well, here's one major reason. It's the power of wealthy individuals and corporations that set these policy agendas. 
And how do they do that? Through one of the most evil ways in this country. They do it through lobbying and campaign contributions. Now, those are two weapons that the poor have no access to. The poor people cannot make campaign contributions that affect the movements of governments and affect taxes and tax cuts. So as long as we have a Supreme Court that declares that a corporation is like an individual and that they can give as much money as they feel like, and in a lot of cases, they can do blind and nobody knows where the money is coming and, and going from. Then we are not going to have a really democratic country that is for all the people, rich and poor. This country runs more for the rich than it does for the poor. And that probably is causing an awful lot of the problems that we are seeing in the areas of systemic racism, because income inequality is a terrible, terrible situation. So while many people during this pandemic have struggled and small businesses have disappeared and people end up working from home and not making ends meet and we need to have stimulus packages and then another stimulus package and that's the right thing to do but the wealthy the very rich have become much richer during this pandemic according to the surveys and according to the research done by these economists and so there's a group called the americans for tax fairness and they are advocating for higher taxes on the wealthy. And we should throw something else into the pot right now. That one of the ways to dig ourselves out of this financial hole that was created by the coronavirus crisis is to make the rich pay for it. Could you imagine that? Making the rich pay for something? Hard to believe that people are even thinking about such a thing. But in any event... I will end this with another Happy New Year to all of you. Stay safe. Wear a mask. We'll make it through 2021. We'll be okay. I'll see you in the morning. Bye.